BeastNet is brought to you by James Safety Services and in partnership with Beast OCR. Here we discuss all things OCR and fitness related, running, endurance, conditioning, wrecking, and more. Welcome to BeastNet. Hey everybody, it's Mike with BeastNet here on a very special two-year anniversary episode. And uh, with me, I've got Emmer and Brother Boggs, you know, uh, to talk about BeastNet, where we've come from, where we're going, all that stuff. How are you boys doing? Good. Took you long enough to answer. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice cold morning outside. Good day to go out and work on our cold weather exercise, getting ready to go kill Michael in 28 days. Yeah, stupid marathon. <laughs> so, uh, pretty sure Don, like I've said on multiple episodes, I'm pretty sure he's trying to kill me. So, <laughs> well, yeah, that I've got an actual like timer on my on my phone now that says days until I kill Michael. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, which is awesome. Well, you know, you guys have been a couple marathons before, so I think it'll be all right. Yeah, maybe. So we'll see what happens. So, so basically, like I said on this episode, we kind of talked about where we came from. I mean, most anyone who's listened to episodes, they know for the first, you know, two, you know, first whatever, almost eighteen months of the the podcast, it was pretty much just me hosting. Um, I had a couple of, a couple times I had you know guest host Adam helped host a couple times and stuff like that, but it's pretty much was just me. Um, and doing what I could, it was a lot of, you know, talking to beast members, stuff like that, a few pro people, um, but not a whole lot. Um, and then I brought, you know, Don and, and Hammer came in as help to, to help me. And, you know, Don has been a huge, huge help in the fact that he took a lot of the planning and a lot of the behind the scenes stuff that people don't see, you know, people don't see all the, the emails, the phone calls, the text messages, to the, you know, the people, the interviewees trying to get everything set up, trying to get the time set up. And that's the stuff that Don took off my plate. And also the editing. It used to be that I would record the episode, edit it, do everything, put it on. Now I pretty much, it's come to a point that I host and that's not it. So I, I host an episode and then that's it. You know, Don sends me an email saying, hey, what days are you available? I'm like, my schedule is completely screwed. So I give him the, you know, few days times that I have available and then he tries to set something up and then I record it and I shoot it to Don and that's it. So Don's a lot of the, the background stuff out of my, off my plate. That's why, you know, you don't hear a lot of him on the episodes. He does record a few here and there, because, you know, him or I can't. So, but besides that, it's just, you know, he does everything in the background. So really probably first working person on this podcast now is the least about. So in the least of, so I do want to say that. Thank you, Don, for everything that you do that you stepped in. So and that's a nice yeah, thing you know, that we're going to say about yeah. you. So. Yeah, it's one time to say something nice. Uh, I was thinking, you know, you win 100 episodes. <laughs> you win 100 episodes of almost just Mike, and that's probably why you decided to get somebody else on there. You were sick of hearing your own voice and yeah. else. But uh, it's that 100th episode where where hosted me talking about tunnel marathon back in june and that's when we uh, got right after that we set everything up to, uh, to expand to two days a week launch a website uh right now we're in the process of migrating our host uh hopefully they will help me finish migrating us but uh but yeah it's been a, a very interesting couple of months because you went from from producing one episode a week to to two to three episodes a week. Some weeks we have the specials, uh, you know, whether it's a news yeah. report or a special report on uh, firefighter. Uh, we should have another report coming up, uh, hopefully with Darcy Shafu from uh, X Warrior. Um, I don't know if anybody listened to his uh, his video this weekend. Uh, he put out an hour long video going over all the changes for 2020, and there's just uh, the whole slew of changes. It's going to be an awesome racing year with Darcy up there in Alberta. But uh, yeah, as far as BeastNet goes, yeah, you know, it's it's almost a full time job. Uh, you know, I'd I'd never learned how to, to do any website design, and now I'm learning how to to code HTML. So anybody that wants to see a severe work in progress, go over to www.beastnetpod.com. Um, send me notes. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you don't like. Whatever. I'm just working on making it a more functional website daily. Um, you know, it's got links to all of our archives, and it's got uh, some of our product reviews, which, 
Yeah, now that I've settled into having two full-time jobs and uh, three different volunteer organizations that I work with, I've almost found time to get back to doing those. But, uh, yeah. yeah, you'll see a lot of things on there. And, and in the end, eventually, we're going to try to direct most of our, our traffic through there from Facebook over yeah. to our, our website. And, and guys, the listeners will notice that more and more, that uh, the links that are showing up on our Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr, Twitter, all those different areas, it's going to be more linked directly to our, our uh, website. Yeah, which is good. And it's one of those things, I mean, like you did mention that we are in the process. We've been using one podcast hosting program for pretty much the entirety of the the podcast, and now we've decided we found one that we like better um, that we're going to sw- switching to. It's one that we actually tested on my my radio show that I do as Brandon Valentine. We we started love and hate on the you know Anchor FM and to test it to see if it was something we wanted to move Beastnet over to. So there's a lot of things, like I said, a lot of things in the background that I don't think anybody really knows. I don't think Don even really knew like what background work really was until he stepped into it. And then he also, you know, like stepped it up too. Like you said, he went from one episode a week to two, you know, stepped it up there. And then we didn't have a, you know, web page before Don ended up, you know, purchasing that and getting us a web page and getting all that stuff. So, I mean, it's been, it's been a giant work in progress. Don has been a huge help in, in getting that, the, the background stuff going that most people don't see or hear about. So one thing I want to make sure he gets his gets acknowledged for that. So. Uh, and and you know, one thing that I don't think we've ever really talked about on the uh, the podcast is is the fact that uh, we do this as a labor of love. There is uh, yeah no monetary income involved. Uh, you know it costs no. a lot more than uh, than we could ever look to recoup. So that's why I always try to tell people you know go on to to Patreon and. Uh, and support us that way if you'd like. Even a dollar a month helps out uh, with the show. Otherwise, uh, here shortly you'll be able to do the same similar thing through the Anchor.fm uh, website. Yeah. But uh, you now the show itself, it's a labor of love. It's something that we put on because we love the OCR community and this community. Um, and we just like to talk to these people and we like to, to hear and share their experiences. And in some cases, you know, a lot of people, this is their first time being interviewed with the racer. And and it's just they're so awestruck that that they're getting a chance to to get their story out there, and, and I just want to be a part of that. It is very it is a lot of fun, and that's one of the reasons you know when I first started doing it, it, it was to talk to those people, and like I said in the beginning, and it was a lot of talking to Beast members and stuff like that because we we've had a a great partnership with Beast for the whole time of the podcast, um, and that was the beginning. You know, and I started getting some of the pro athletes and stuff like that, but nobody, you know, not a whole lot of them, just a, just a few here and there. And then Don, when he came on, he really pushed the pro athletes, plus the race director talking to, you know, the other races. We've had a very big push to talk to local races, some of the smaller races, you know, sometimes, I mean, I guess, you know, Alberta, Canada isn't local to us, but it's close enough that we could go there. But talking to a lot of those local races to get, you know, to get them some some, you know, some love. So, yeah. So, yeah, then, of yeah, course, yeah, you know, and, and, uh, my... Oh, sorry. Uh, I was going to say, I think that's probably been my favorite part of the whole thing is is actually kind of branching away from not just talking with racers, but actually talking with race directors. I mean, some of my yeah. some of my favorite interviews are with race directors um, because you just, you, you know, like you've said before, Mike, uh, you know, you, you get so familiarized and so caught up in either, you know, Spartans or, you know, any of your name brand races, and then you kind of forget about the localized ones. And then when you start talking to these local ones, you're like, wow, these guys have a lot to offer, and they've got a lot of fun stuff that we've never even thought of before. So, yeah. Well, not just like I did the, the run amok, you know, recently went out there we actually had they let us have a booth we had their own booth you know we talked to people it was a blast but doing the race uh me and uh, frank cave did it and while we were in the race both of us were talking about how it was like it felt like recess we were just out there having fun there was none of that that push you get in like you know spartan where it's like you got to go faster you got to be better you got to blah 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 but that race it was just fun now when tough mode it was a lot of that same feeling of just we were out there with a bunch of friends having fun you know and it was that that's what was pretty cool. So, yeah. So and then, you know, I was going to say Kyle too. Kyle has been, you know, 
Kyle stepped in about the same time Don did. You know, I talked to Kyle before about, you know, coming as being my, my, my second host because I needed to, to tell him about to say it, I needed a break. Um, one, you know, like Don said, I was tired of hearing my own voice. Um, I'd actually gotten to a point where I would take notes so I didn't have to go back and listen to the episodes to find spots. I would take notes so I could just, you know, I knew what time something had happened, so I didn't have to listen to the whole thing again. But, <laughs> but uh, with you know, and I find if I was getting tired of hearing my own voice, I was pretty sure the listeners probably were too. So it was good to get a second voice in there, you know, to do some episodes. It gives a second voice and a second perspective. Everyone for you know a hundred episodes heard my perspective of you know talking to people and my questions and my stories. I mean, how many? times that you know can you hear about me doing montana in 2015 it you know <laughs> or, or any of the other things it's yeah because it's one of those things you get talking to someone i sometimes forget that i'm on a podcast and these people have listened over and over again the person i'm talking to has never heard this story but everybody on the podcast has heard it seven or eight times or more so it's like, you know, yeah. it's good to get a second voice in there that, to talk. So so it's you coming on was a great thing. And the, the episodes you've been recording are awesome. It's a little bit different take than me, which is good. I like that. I, it's having the diversity of two different voices, two different takes on, on everything. I mean, I'm pretty sure we could view the same people and come up with two completely different episodes, which is awesome. And that's what I oh, want. So, yeah, I'm sure we could. I'm sure we could. Um, and that's, you know, that's kind of um, what I was thinking too. Like I, I know I've got kind of a different take from, from yours and I, I've been kind of trying to change mine up here a little bit. Cause I've, I've already thought about, you know, man, you know, I've, I've talked to quite a few people and I've told some of the same stories and some of the, you know, some of the interviews and I know some of the listeners are probably like, Oh, Hey, I heard that, you know, two weeks ago or whatever. And, and uh, yeah, I'm trying to like shake it up a little bit, you know, and come up with different questions and, you know, different talking points and, and stuff like that. Cause you know, this, this is still relatively fairly new to me. Um, I mean, I, I haven't really ever done, um, interview type stuff or even radio type stuff until this year. So it, it's still kind yeah. of, um, I'm still kind of fresh in that. So, I mean, you know, it's going to take some time to, to kind of like come up with my own brand of, you know, episode or whatever. But um, I think I've got, you know, a couple of things that I'm, I'm trying to work on that maybe, um, you know, bring some, you know, some originality to it, at least, you know, at least as far as compared to my other episodes. So, yeah, which is, is good. I mean, that's one of the things, I mean, that's a lot of people don't know. Like for me, I did, I, I have had had a podcast for, you know, another podcast called We Nurse for over three years now. And that podcast is completely different than this. That podcast, there's no interviews. It's just me and my friend Matt talking for anywhere from an hour to sometimes two. So there's no interviewing. It's just us having a conversation like we are right now. So that's kind of the only real, you know, when I talk about my other podcast, it's not interviews. It's not me calling people, not doing stuff like that. It's just me and Matt. Every once in a while, we'll have an interview. We've had, you know, Julia Ling from chuck on there stuff like that but you know and then the what the scott farkas from christmas story we had the guy who played that <laughs> but so i mean we'll get random stuff like that but i'm not the interviewing part that i do with beastnet was brand new to me too when i first started and i think if you really go back and listen to the first episode you can hear that and then it's just you know because people are like oh you you've gotten good at you're really good at this and blah blah it's like yeah because i've been doing it every week for over, almost yeah. two years so, and that's kind of it. And I think it really helped too when I started the Love and Hate Radio because Love and Hate Radio is a comedy, you know, show, but it's still an interview show. I mean, you know, Hammer's been on that with me. Um, we call them ball peen. So if you ever listen to an episode and you hear ball peen, that's Hammer. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I didn't pick it, just saying. But because you know, on the, the Love and Hate, I'm, yeah, Beach did. On Love and Hate, I'm Brandon Valentine. I, that's my stage name when I do comedy. But it, it's the same kind of thing. And I think a lot of that is, uh, you know, stuff I learned doing BeastNet. So BeastNet's been a, an amazing thing for the last two years for me. So um, I've been talking a whole lot. Do you guys have anything you want to say about the, you know, BeastNet being two years old as of, you know, uh, November 6th, two years? First episode was with the Beastmaster, the original Beastmaster, which, hint, hint, he might be coming up on a later episode really soon. So, <laughs> yeah, just saying. <laughs> uh, you so, know, what do you guys uh, have to say about it? Go ahead, Don. Well, I was going to say, you know, the, the first two years, um, I've been re-listening to it all. Um, 
because I've got nothing better to do when I'm doing 8 million other things, but I've been re-listening to it all, and, and you can hear that progression from, you know, originally a lot of your episodes were, were 20, maybe 30 minutes because you you uh, didn't have a lot of honed interview skills, and, uh, and as they got further and further along, you started getting longer and longer episodes, and, uh, and a lot of things worked out real well there. Um, and eventually, uh, you started getting better at editing and all that fun stuff. Um, in yeah. the first two years, there there was a lot of uh, almost primarily just Beast, which, you know, being a, a product that has been in partnership with the Beast OCR Racing Group, you know, it's a, a wonderful thing uh, to, to interview them. And, you know, we still try to get... Uh, between one and four beasts a month on, depending on uh, on what's going on. You know, of course, you're always yeah. going to get the, the monthly the monthly beast report with Kim Collins. Um, and you know, special thanks and shout out to Kim. She does a, a great job with the beast reports. You know, it's not yes. not easy to sit there and do a do a written um, article plus a a telephone interview with somebody and she's been just doing a great job at that and uh, look forward to seeing her doing that you know, in the future um, yeah that first two years has been uh, been amazing to, to see the growth of the, the program um, you know, we're working on again we're just going back and forth with the future but we're working on uh, some other sponsors for the show uh, I know the Beast, the Beast Racing Group picked up a handful of new sponsors this year for their 2020 Pro and Ambassador teams um, you know, and, it, and we can't talk enough about the, the Beast OCR team. Um, you were talking about racing with Brian Kays up at uh, Runamuck a couple months ago, and you know Brian is a, a huge proponent of the race local. So yeah, 2020 Beast OCR is bringing back uh, the race local challenge. Uh, you can find that at Beast OCR, BeastChallenge.com. Um, now the the Beast group has partnered up with with uh, a family down in uh, down in Randall and this yep. weekend being uh, being two days from his airs they're hosting what we call ghost down there nope um, nope beast breaker ghost is in february beast breaker is yep, you're right that coming like a sorry, sorry just had to correct it that's what happens when it, that's what happens when i'm driving that's right yeah. ghost is on my birthday somebody's trying to tell me something that i think by putting ghost on my birthday not me <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, I need to sleep in that day. No, oh. oh, is that what it is? Um, no. You know, funny thing. Why don't Why don't we take a quick time out for a for a commercial here, and then uh, when we come back, let's talk about where we're going in 2020 with BeastNet because uh, there's a lot going on. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Like what you hear? Make sure and subscribe and review us on your favorite podcast platform. Be sure to find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you're using YouTube, please click the little red subscribe icon, then click the little bell for notifications of future episodes. And if you could, give us a thumbs up. So welcome back from the uh, commercial break there. Wonderful sponsor there. Oh, yeah. Could be uh, yeah. one of Leave it to the, the, the podcast manager to remind us that we need to do those because somebody, <laughs> I won't name names, somebody forgets to do those almost every damn episode. So... That's why if you haven't noticed sometimes on in some episodes, it doesn't seem like it fits perfectly in there. That's because somebody is really horrible about reminding that. I'm not going to say names, me. But, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was kind of the funny thing. I was listening to to the episode that just aired here. God, I think it was on Thursday with Aaron Singleton. And, and you know, I felt bad because he was like in mid-sentence where I broke for commercial. I'm like, oh, yeah, I guess I missed that mark a little bit. <laughs> It happens, but but yeah, I'm horrible know, with that one. 2020 for BeastNet. Uh, you know, I'm working on a lot of things. A lot. I'm working on, like I said, behind behind the scenes, I'm working on some sponsorships. Uh, you know, BeastNet at its core has always been meant to be a uh, a network, and and I think yes. Michael has has something that we've been working on for that one. Wow, Bing. time for that. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. I, I hit the my my punching bag with something, um, but yeah, no, I have been. I, I, we we have some we've been on the, in the works with for uh, the you know, like I said, originally BeastNet was supposed to be the reason why its name was BeastNet was network. That's what the net stands for. So anybody who didn't know that, now you do. It, it stood for network because I wanted it to be not just my voice. I wanted it to be multiple voices, and you know, a lot of them. 
So I just really was never able to get that help until Dawn came along. Um, so for a hundred episodes, it really was just me with, you know, a sprinkling here and there of Adam and a few, I, I think Adam actually was the only one that ever hosted another episode. Um, so now we're really working on getting that, that net out there. Um, we're in the, the talks right now with forming a BeastNet International, where we're going to have hosts from other countries that will be doing, you know, probably to start with probably monthly, monthly episodes um, that will be added into the mix of, you know, the BeastNet International, which will be really cool. Those, those beast nets will focus on whatever country or even, I mean, really just international, you know, the international interviews. I mean, me and Hammer will still do ours, but we will be ha- adding in those, those BeastNet Internationals. So, which will be really cool. Um, the, the people that we're talking to right now for the first real installment of that are a lot of fun. Um, great people that we've known for a while. So it'll be, it'll be good. Um, I'm hoping for that first one is going to be, when, when are we talking on that, Don? The first episode of that, possibly? Uh, it should be December 15th, should be the first episode of BeastNet International. And it's nice. set to have a, uh, a very special um, pro, Spartan pro athlete on there, actually. So that'll be real cool. Yes, that will be really cool. So I'll be able to listen to that while I'm driving back from California for my last beast of 2019 and my first beast of 2020. So that new rule is going to make it fun for next year. I think I can hit four this time. So, um, (laughs) (laughs) hey, if you're going to give me an extra beast, I mean, you know, I might as well go for it. So, yeah. So. So that's one big thing. I mean, it's going to be really fun to, to talk to them. And I will say this too is, I mean, BeastNet has been, for the most part, I mean, just because that's kind of the race that I do the most of Spartan, has been very Spartan centric. Um, I feel like some of these international teams are more, they lean more towards some other races. So I think it's going to pull some of that, that pull a little bit away from Spartan and start looking at some of the other OCRs too in those aspects. I mean, they'll still be Spartan, but those, the, the ones we're talking to now, they're more into the other, one of the other brands. So, which will be, I think really nice and really cool to like hear about that. So, yeah. So well, you, hopefully you that'll help that us tap into plus, another brand. Uh, I was going to say, you got that. Plus you also got uh, some of the other people that we're working with on this uh, project. They, they do a lot more of the OCR uh, world championships and and like you said yes. the other brands uh, you know Tough Mudder and uh, and you know honestly Rugged Maniac is another one that I've been yep. been talking to some people that that rep them so I mean it's it's been fun I'm working on my international translations because uh, some of these people yep. don't have the best English too so. Which is one of those things that we may look into in the future it may end up being that we have some that are in other languages so you know why not. You know, go from that. So, I mean, if we can get, you know, I mean, if we go international, we want to go international. So we want to make this a net. Um, so that's that's one big thing that we're looking into is the expansion into the international market. So that's that that's going to be a huge, huge step up for, for BeastNet. So, yeah. Beast Internet. BeastNet. Yeah. Beast it's International. International BeastNet International. Beast. BeastNet International. Beast Internet. Beast Internet. So it's going to be, it's going to be a cool, it's going to be cool. It's going to be cool to have those, those new partnerships, you know, and new, new stuff. So it'll be really neat to have that. So what other, what other things are we looking at? Speaking of new stuff, you're going to see, you're going to see in 2020, a lot more active uh, YouTube channel and Facebook uh, videos. Um, Working on setting up to do more on-site interviews or impromptu. Actually, I was working on a comedy feature to uh, to fit into just as a uh, you know because we've all been out on the on the trail and you know a lot of people laugh when they hear Mike talk about the stories about P deep. But uh, there's always funny, embarrassing things that happen out on the trail, and uh, I want to bring that into some of the production of the show. And uh, and I found a few different ways to do that. There is. There's a lot of things. I mean, there's a lot of nicknames, stuff like that. I mean, I had Chorizo on not too long ago, and we have a saying that we say all the time, you know, what happens under the dunk wall stays under the dunk wall. You know, you get some really weird looks when you say that, but... You know, I mean, there's there's all sorts of stuff. I mean, and it's not just things that happen. Sometimes it's just 
things that people say, you know, and something because when you've been out on that course for as long as some of us been, because, you know, we make most of these races in an endurance event, um, you get a little punch <laughs> drunk. <laughs> You, you do. You get a little punch drunk and you start saying things and, you know, some of the filters that we put on ourselves, because most people know my filter is broken for the most part. But even when I've been out there that long, I start getting a little punch drunk and my filter just completely breaks. And I'll say things that, you know, I'll probably, you know, any other time wouldn't be appropriate, but they're funny on the course and they keep us going. So there's a lot of funny things that are said and a lot of funny things that happen. Um, there's uh, me and Jeff. Elise's Lisa's fiance, uh, we were skipping one day when we were with Elise and all of a sudden she turned around and me and Jeff were holding hands and skipping down the trail. So, I mean, it's, yeah, there's interesting things that happen out on the course. So that would be a fun, a fun thing to do. One of the and things the that we I added, like the uh, oh, yeah, the videos, one of the things that we added by migrating the show over to anchor.fm is if you're using the anchor.fm app or if you're using the desktop browser, there's a button where you can click to leave us a message. Now, if you leave us something yes. that we can use in the show, definitely do that because we want to we want to use your your voice in the show. And sometimes maybe if you got questions or something, you think we should ask racers, or you have a suggestion for a racer for us to get in touch with. I mean, if you notice, occasionally yeah. I'll just put out a I'll put out a, a Facebook post saying who should we have on the show, and for the most part, yes. I contact everybody on those threads. So I've been working. Uh, I know I put one up up in Grit, Grit OCR here a while back. And and, uh, and I haven't made my way through that thread yet, but, uh, but I've been kind of holding that back with the international thing coming up. Uh, but last time we posted uh, this last batch, we, we had a whole bunch of people. And, uh, and I think if you guys start leaving us messages on either things that you want to hear or people that you want to hear on the show or whatever, just let us know. And that's, that's part of the reason for migrating because it gave us that talk back section. It did. And then, which is really cool. I mean, that, that is cool that you guys can do a talk back and that's it. And I mean, that's one thing that we really want from the listeners and that, you know, I've tried pushing and I think Dawn's been better about pushing this is getting the feedback. Um, you know, for me, I, every once in a while, I would post on BSOCR, one of those like, hey, who would you want to hear? You know, and I honestly got annoyed with half the people that were posting things. And I'm like, we talked to that person two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you're going to answer, at least tell me someone that, you know, isn't going to already been on the show like two weeks ago. But, and, and it just, and for me, it was just, it was a lot. I mean, I had a lot on my plate trying to do that. I'm a person who, if anyone hasn't figured it out, likes to stay busy. You know, as I mentioned on here, I have three, you know, this podcast plus another one and a radio show. So in a radio show that I do that, I turn into a podcast. So, I mean, it's, there's a lot on my plate, but I still want BeastNet to be the best that it can be. And that's, that was my, my motivation of bringing, you know, Dawn and Hammer in, you know, was because I wanted BeastNet to be the best that it could. And I knew for that to happen, I needed help. So and I, I chose, if anyone's wondered why I chose these guys, one, Don, I've known Don since preschool. We've been friends forever. If anybody, if I can trust anybody with my baby, which BeastNet, you know, obviously is my baby, it would be Don. So, and Hammer, you know, he married Don's sister, so we have to give him a break. So. <laughs> <laughs> He's just taking pity on me, I see. Yeah. Don't, don't tell Dee I said that. She'll kill me. But um, uh, she'll probably she's scary. to listen to this episode. We know she'll scared. She's scared, but yeah, you told so. me I married her. <laughs> I know that's why we took pity on you. But no, and it's not just that. I mean, honestly, you know, I I say that in jest, and I mean that's that's why the other reason why I really picked Hammer was one, um, he he's he's good at this. You know, when I did the interview with him and talking back and forth, I could tell that he's going to be good at this. And two, he's got similar to the same sense of humor I do. So when we're doing stuff like this, and I throw stuff out there about saying his wife's evil, he knows it's funny and laughs. So I mean, you know, I can't get that with everybody else so yeah oh come on i've known her for 30 something years she is evil she is i know trust me i gave her the, i gave her the mark so that we can remember which one was which wait i'm not admit to that <laughs> the, Sorry, the it was dawn me. dawn did it i did <laughs> so she's got if you look at it it's right above her eyebrow but it was dawn it wasn't me i'm kidding it wasn't me i didn't do it don't tell her i did it she'll kill me um Sorry, we pick on her, but D D's great. So you, you you're you're a lucky man, Kyle. So um, what other what other stuff do we got coming, boss? Don's the manager. He's the one that talks to most of these people. I kind of a lot of times, honestly, I will get things started 
Like I'm that like I'm the youngest, so I'm the one that starts something and then steps back and lets somebody else deal with it. So and that's kind of <laughs> how I've done a few things now on the podcast. So I'll start something and then be like, "Hey, Don," and throw him in and let him finish it. So, yeah. So what other things are we we working on? Um, Who is that? Yeah, to put me on the spot. I just, uh, if that's somebody playing Zelda Four Swords, you're probably picking up the background there when you walk away. Nice. See, you hear Link sitting there attacking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yep. Uh, yep. but yeah, so coming up next year, what else do we got? We got we're working on making Beastnet more mobile. We're trying to, like I said, get more out in the field recording. But the other thing is, is uh, you know, the three hosts we're all working on our race schedules for next year. And part of it yes. is going to be some travel to places that we've never been. Um, you know, you're starting uh, in December with California, which yep. I, I keep I keep mulling over. I might might figure out how to fit riding carpool to California into my schedule um, because of the fact that, that clears me with another beast for my my 2020 schedule and uh it does and, and, and the thing is too that i've thought about this because the, the super was my issue i'm like if i do another beast where am i getting another super but then i remembered oh montana is a beast super weekend now boom i do a beast and a super in a weekend we're good that's gonna hurt well, you know if you just that call, really gonna if hurt. You call in sick on that on that monday you do a beast super in california and then all of a sudden you got two beasts and two supers between california and montana that's not a that's not a super that weekend, is it? It's a beast sprint. Uh, are you sure? In Cali. I might have to look. You might want to look. I might have to look. I might be I'm wrong. If you're doing both days. Because, yeah, I don't, I don't need any sprints. There's, we can do sprints any time we want. There's sprints everywhere. Yeah. It's the, the 10K and the 21K races that are getting hard to find. Yeah. And, you know, that's 2020. Everyone's complaining. I mean, the first thing you heard, oh, my God, the super is a 10K. I think I posted, you know, somewhere that a, a 10K in Spartan miles is still probably 15 miles because they, they don't know how to measure yeah. a 10K. Well, no, a lot of people, what people forget is that Spartan, they don't, most of the time, at least unless they're going to change this in their standardization, is they never measures the, the out and backs. So when you do the bucket or the, you know, the bucket or the sandbag where you're going out and back with it, that's not counted in the mileage. So you have a lot of those where you go out and back that, you know, all of a sudden you're getting, you know, you'll have a quarter mile that you add on because of, you know, the bucket carry and another quarter mile because of the sandbag carry. And then they might have a log carry or something else. Any of those out and backs, they don't count. So that's where a lot of those extra miles come in that people don't think about. So, oh, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, Montana last year, I booked it around 17 and a half. And the, the most common thing for everybody with all the carries was actually closer to 18 and a half. Um, yeah, I felt bad because the final, final bucket carry, I'm, I'm like fall down, unable to stand up and, and Jody still gets out there and, you know, with a spotter, um, still manages to, to carry a bucket and make the loop. And I'm just sitting there staring at her going, you're crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But, uh, but no, that's, that's the big thing for 2020 is that with, with three hosts and an international contingent, we should be able to see a lot more races in person. We should be able to get some more photos yes. and, and video on site. Uh, now I'm working on some, some better video editing software because I'm absolutely miserable with it. Uh, you can tell by the, the YouTube no, channel. No, if you need that, let me know. I've, I have that because I tried, started doing that cooking thing with, with that one idiot and that didn't go well. So, but I have software. I paid yeah, for it. So. Cooking. <laughs> cooking with pudding. Who, who, yeah, that was who one, dude. Dude. No, I was that. cooking with whiskey. Cooking with pudding. Yeah, yeah, I was like cooking with whiskey, pudding. dude. Yeah, well, he was an idiot. That he was the bad part. Head. It was fun, though. I was having a blast. So, yeah, he's he, he's in North Dakota now. So that's why I have my own radio show. But, yeah. <laughs> But which is actually one thing I was going to mention with when I was talking about Kyle earlier was, you know, with the whole idea of doing it a little bit different. I love that. And that's kind of one thing I've really noticed, because when I stopped doing a radio show with Puddin and started doing my own, that was one of the biggest focuses in my head is how can I make sure this is different? How can I make sure that I stand apart from what Puddin was doing? So if you if you go back and ever listen to any of Puddin's shows, which he's supposedly bringing back, um, you ever go listen to any of those, they're a completely different show than what my show is, which is something that I strive very hard to do to make my own way. But like I said, I think BeastNet really helps me with that because they are, it's very similar to BeastNet. It's just comedy. There's swearing. Um, Ben's called Beach. I mean, it's, you know, and we call Hammer Ball Peen. It's really weird, but whatever. So, <laughs> For now. No. 
for now. So, which by the way, you two are invited on that show anytime. So, um, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I just have to find the time to do it. Yeah. No, that's my problem right now is time. I got so much crap I'm doing. So, and I start school as of today. So mm. the, the day that BeastNet hits two years, I start my bachelor's degree again. So, and if I do things right, I should be done by this time next year. But that's going to put a lot of <laughs> crunch on me to get that done. So, but, yeah, well, yeah. Um, other things coming up for next year. Uh, we're going to start having uh, some giveaways. Uh, I'm working on uh, a clothing line. I mean, I've, I'm just working on yep. every time I get an idea or somebody sends me an idea, I just, is that something I can do? Is that something I can work with? Ah, heck, let's give it a try and see if it works. It's like the old spaghetti roll. Yeah. Throw it at the wall, see if it sticks. Pretty much. You know, somebody didn't understand that the other day. I didn't realize that. I didn't know that wasn't a thing anymore. I still do it. Throw the spaghetti at the wall and see if it sticks. My wife gets mad because usually it's the ceiling, but. <laughs> and no, one, no wonder you so, stick to renting. That way you can, leave, you can leave all that spaghetti there for somebody else. Pretty much. They're going to wreck this house when we leave anyway. So, um, so yeah, what else do we got? We got, the, we got a few partnerships we're working on, right, that are kind of in the infancy stages, but they're ones that we're, we're talking to them and working on possible partnerships in the future. Well, so. as people have noticed, there's there's a lot of podcasts out there. There's a lot of uh, written media, a lot of Facebook media, um, a lot of different outlets to get your information about racing and races. You know, honestly, with us being overall fitness, um, not just um, OCR, um, it's kind of made for some interesting things that we can step outside of our box. But then still being inside our box for OCR, there's a lot of a lot of OCR media out there. And, and yeah, I've been, been contacted by a couple of different outlets that, uh, that want to partner with us where maybe they do a print version of something and, uh, and we do a, a, a recorded version very similar to, to what the Beast Report is, but, uh, but being more on a, a national scale. So that'll, that'll be really cool if we can get that up and running. Yeah. So and there's, a, there's a couple that we're talking to about that and possible ones. So it should be good. Um, that's been one of the, the nice things I think with that would give us a, it would give us a better reach towards some of these elites that we're having problems getting. Uh, there's a few elites that we've really wanted to talk to. And a lot of the listeners have really said, hey, I think you should talk to these guys. They're hard to get. Um, and if you're, you know, if you're working with another known, you know, another known media outlet, then you can work together to say, Hey, we're going to do this as a written one. And then at the same time, can you talk, you know, let's set you up, talk to BeastNet, and we'll do a, you know, an audio one. So it's pretty, that'll be a cool thing to help us be able to get those people that we haven't been able to in the past. There's some, you know, there's some elites that we have our sights on that we just have not been able to hook up with. Part of it runs into Don can tell you that um, a lot of them, once you hit a certain part and become that, you know, that infamous or that famous, um, a lot of them get management. So then you're going through the management and then it's a third party and then it gets even more, you know, hard to get to them. And so it becomes interesting. So, you know, we got lucky in the beginning and, you know, recently where we've been able to get some of those elites, but it's going to be, it's going to take some extra stuff to get some of the others. Well, and, and a lot of what you see, um, because sometimes I'll, I'll set up people for you guys to interview and you guys are like, who's this, who's this racer? And it's like, I'm pretty sure this is the, the next, you know, Ryan Atkins or Lindsay Webster. I'm looking, I'm watching for up and comers because if we can get the partnerships with them early on, we don't have to worry about going through a media or a PR person. Um, the PR yeah. people have made, you know, PR is great um, to have a PR manager, but it also makes you inaccessible to a lot of people. And, and that's, uh, yeah. I've got I've got a few of them where they're PR people. I ask them, you know, what is a better date or time for your for your athlete? And they'll never answer that question for me. So I just have to keep sending out, hey, in two weeks we're recording at these times. Do these work? Or hey, next month we've got these weekends open if you need to record on the weekends. The PR people won't give me anything to work with. So that's that's why I think it's important to be working on on kind of the, the next generation. You know, if you watch uh, this weekend's uh, World Championships, you know, maybe I'm not going after the one, two, three, um, top three people. Maybe I'm going after four, five, six, seven, because those are the people that are up and coming that are looking at next year's, um, being next year's top athletes. Yeah. So, Which um, we good. You know, in, in answer to your text, Mike, just, just to make it on the radio here, um, 
a lot of times I can hear you making your mixed drinks. Clunk, clunk, dribble, dribble. You know, that's that's what I was saying. You need a, a mute button for. So that wasn't a mixture. Nice that was coffee. That was well, coffee, and I was I'm putting my protein powder. I was putting my protein powder into my coffee. It wasn't even like anything bad for me. It's the protein powder I'm supposed to be <laughs> eating, drinking anyway. I'm just hey, mixing well, like two I'm things, the saying. coffee and the protein powder. So, but uh, that, that's why you need yeah. a mute button, just to, to get off subject there, you know. It, it, and honestly, you know it's, if you guys have ever, if anybody in the listener group's ever hung out with Mike and Kyle and I, you know, we, uh, we're about as dysfunctional as you get when we're trying to tell a story, but uh, we have a lot of fun getting there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So, we are. Oh, we are very dysfunctional. Uh, yeah. I always make sure that but, I mix my drinks before the show. See, well, I do, too, but I then I usually need another one in the middle. So. <laughs> I make numerous drinks, so that way I don't have to go back. I'm, yeah. I'm lazy like that. There you go. There you go. Well, actually, yeah, you know, no, that'd, that'd be a good reminder. That'd be a good reminder for you, Mike. That's a great time to go ahead and do a commercial break. No, that would be. That would be a good time to do a commercial break. So part of what it is, too, is I mean, a lot of people don't know this. I, 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 I pace, honestly, while I'm, I'm recording these. I have a headset. I plug it into my phone, and I roam the house. There's been episodes where I clean the table, and I do all sorts of stuff because I'm an I'm a anxious person, so I have to be moving. When I do the Love and Hate or We Nerdish podcast, both of those, I'm looking right at the person I'm talking to. So in that situation, I'm talking to them so it's different. When I'm doing this show, because most of it's recorded over, you know, phone conversations and stuff like that, we're not in the same room, I get nervous and anxious, so I have to pace. So I will literally, yeah. I think normally on an episode, I think my Fitbit will register about 2,000 steps as I'm pacing around the house while I'm talking to people. So, so that's why sometimes you hear things in the background is because I'm walking around the house doing something. <clears throat> yeah. So that's just me. That's my craziness. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Yeah. So <laughs> I, uh, I hold myself up in my spare bedroom because uh, it's my basically the only quiet space I have away from all the goings on of being a father to a young child. Um, yeah. So, See, my, um, yeah, my youngest so is 17. Like, so. Child proof. Yeah. I have to child proof my interviews, so to speak. So what that means is basically I have to go upstairs. I have to put up um, numerous baby gates, closed doors, um, you know, that way. Taser. My, you know. That way my, yeah, <laughs> taser, yeah, so that my daughter doesn't, you know, interrupt. Um, there's been a couple of interviews where she's made it past those provisions and bust into the room and, you know, I'm like mid-interview. And, um, and so, like, I'll have to, you know, edit out, edit out those sequences or stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, it's, um, you know, it is what it is. It's a learning experience. So, uh, no, it is. you know, mix, and that's mix what the a couple part of about this. child proof the interviews. And, and, and so, it, you know, and like you said, you, you made, uh, mentioned about it being easier looking at the person and, and it is, it's a lot better it is. Um, to me, I think, in, you know, for conversation, engaging conversation, um, that you, you know, that you're able to see, you know, who you're talking to and interact with them. And then, um, there's always the, um, the fun issue of the couple second lag that we have whenever we're on a phone interview. So, yeah, every once in a while, the other thing you get too, is you get, um, the social cues. People don't realize the social cues. When you're sitting there, like when I'm doing the other episodes and I'm right across from the people on my other shows, I can see them and I can see, you can tell people have social cues before they're about to talk. When you're on a, yeah. you know, a phone call, you don't. That's why a lot of times you get the pause is because you're trying to wait to see, are they done talking? You yeah. know, and all that kind uh, of stuff. So, yeah. A lot of times when I edit, I take out a lot of the, the two, three, four second pauses. So they're actually not as bad as, as they are in raw form. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Some of those you've got like an episode. Uh, honestly, there was one that I recorded where, where the guest and I did a really good job of not talking over each other. But it ended up being almost an hour and a half that I edited down to an hour just by taking out the pauses. <laughs> yep. I've done that on a few where there was like I've when I used to, and I don't do it as much as I, when I first started. I would truncate out. It's called truncate the silence or whatever. But I would take the silences out. And there was ones where you would lose 15, 20 minutes. Just boom, gone. Oh, because yeah. there was so many pauses and so much, yeah. But yeah. and then you're like, shoot! There's I just had an hour episode that's now 40 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I've done that a couple of times. You get on there and you record. You're like, oh yeah, I got an hour and 10 minutes worth of raw, you know, raw content. You get on there and you truncate silence, and you're like, wait, 46 minutes? What the yeah. heck? Yeah. 
No, it's one of those things. It's now, a learning process. Of, it really is. Speaking of the social cues and seeing the other people, I don't even think I told you guys about this, but uh, I'm finding a lot more people using using Skype or Facebook Messenger video and stuff like that. And and I'm working on, you know, WebEx has the functionality of it, but I'm working on making sure that yeah. we've got the bandwidth to be able to do it. But uh, but I'm hoping to be able to start doing some video recordings and, and then porting the video recording over into an audio for the podcast. So, again, that's, that's where, you know, everybody needs to get over and subscribe on our Facebook. It may not be the most active or most fun Facebook yet, but this year during every race you're going to see just – tons more posts uh we started doing it last year especially during tough mutter i think i posted an hour of video from our day at tough mutter yeah. um and, and that's that's what you guys are going to see you're going to see us out there having fun talking to athletes in the field you know in some cases making complete fools of ourselves but uh yeah. that's we need everybody to get over and subscribe on youtube and honestly subscribe on, on whatever podcast platform you're listening to because otherwise, you know, unless we get a share from a national media or something, a lot of people don't see it because Facebook has, has changed the algorithms. Facebook, uh, Instagram, which is a Facebook company, and, and, uh, and Twitter, they, if you've noticed, your, your friends and the things that you want to see are actually missing from your feeds now because Facebook's changed their algorithm to actually hide that stuff from you and try to send you things that they want you to see more. So that's, that's a political thing or whatever. I don't know. But I just, I've noticed that, that without multiple people sharing or a national media outlet reposting or resharing or retweeting or, or whatever, our, our deal, um, because, because I watch the analytics of everything and you know, we'll have episodes where only 200 people see the post on Facebook and other episodes where a couple thousand see it. And that's, that's a lot of times that's just the difference between the listeners reposting, the athletes reposting, or a, a national media outlet reposting. And if you're not subscribed to us, you're, you're not going to see those because unless somebody else reposted it and you're second, third, fourth person removed, you don't get to see it. So, you know, unfortunately, the, the world of media, um, as soon as they figured out they could charge us to promote our posts, they started hiding them. And, you know, as soon as I yeah. saw that on Instagram with the promotes on there, I noticed uh, less and less things that I'm looking for on Instagram coming up and more gibberish. So uh, just get out there and subscribe, follow, um, thumbs up, all those things to, to keep apprised of what BeastNet's doing, especially with us going international. Um, you know, the, the easy international, of course, can be Canada. Um, I'm working possibly over in the, the European Union a little bit and South America. And, and if we can get those up and running, you know, that's going to be something that, that takes word of mouth to get it out there. A lot of repostings. Anybody who can repost, start doing that. That'd be awesome. So anybody who's in OCR usually has friends who are in OCR. Sorry, yeah. rambling a little I bit. I have no friends in OCR. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you have us? But no, it, and that is, I mean, friends <laughs> of OCR, and I mean, it's, when you start going to more races and stuff like that, you start getting, like, friends in complete other countries. I mean, I have, you know, I, I've had people that I met from Australia, stuff like that, especially going to the Hawaii races. You get a lot of Australian racers, stuff like that. So, I mean, you get, you know, a lot of those start meeting more people, you know. We have uh, some people that are the, the Beast International people that we're working with, you know, are, are in Australia um, at the moment. So, I mean, hopefully they'll be making some friends down there and some people maybe they can interview later. So, I mean, it's it's a lot about the relationships you make. Um, you know, a lot of the interviews I've gotten is because I've had some kind of interaction with the person in real life. Um, so, yeah, that's been a huge help So in getting those. So, and also just people spreading the word. I mean, really, it's like once we started getting the Alberta stuff and started talking to, you know, Darcy and stuff like that was because somebody else said, hey, look at these guys, you know, and they introduced us to them. So, I mean, it's, you know, spread the word, introduce us to people. If there's someone that, you know, you, you think we should be talking to, introduce us to them, you know, send them, send them a message and say, hey, I want you, you should talk to these guys, you know, and stuff like that. You know, that's kind of how we got into, you know, the, the pennies for quarters doing the, you know, the, the run amok. Lisa, you know, Lisa posted something about that, uh, Lisa Ann, and we were able to, you know, 
get together with them, record an episode, and then have a great relationship with them where, you know, there's a lot of stuff they're doing in the future that we might be a part of. So there's some plans that we've been talking to, you know, uh, Matthew Rainwater about working together on some some later things that they've got coming up. So it's those partnerships and stuff like that that you, you build um, really help the, the help us grow. So. Do you like challenges that are fun, tough, and might use tacos? Head on over to BeastChallenge.com and check out our upcoming events, including Beast's 5K+, Plus, a combination of race and endurance event, and the Bucket Mile. Keep an eye on the Beast's OCR Facebook group for event gatherings. For more information, head on over to BeastChallenge.com and the Beast's OCR Facebook group. You'll be glad you did. The long pregnant pause. Did I lose you guys? I think I'm going to put a commercial. I think I'm going to put a commercial in there. You probably should. So it was a nice little pause there. Yep. So what other so what else other you things got? You, I mean, gentlemen? I, I've I've been bringing up a lot of stuff. Uh, I know Kyle. Uh, one of the things that we kind of tasked him with that uh, that I know he'll get to eventually is uh, creating some original bed music uh, and some original yeah. intro and outro music. I've uh, um, I've been to around who, with a little bit of it. So yeah. Anybody who knows Kyle so. Kyle was a uh, a musician in his former life uh, in a few different bands. Uh, made uh, polka made music. albums and some tours. Yeah. yeah, big polka guy. If you listen to that industrial yeah. polka <laughs> music, polka. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I that would be amazing, like the, dude. Uh, industrial yeah, very much polka. like the polka that would be awesome. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking of a new bing partnership bing with Weird Al Yankovic. Yes, that would be amazing. Yeah. Talk about my hero, but yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, there's, um, but yeah, I have been kind of tooling around with a little bit of that. Um, I <clears throat> I don't get to sit down with my instruments as often as I would like. Um, making time to to do that has been kind of hectic. Um, but uh, wait till you're married a little bit longer. You have plenty of time. <laughs> And, um, yeah, plenty of time to play with your instrument. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so um, I've actually been going back to some of the stuff that I've um, that I have from years past that was like completely and totally unused, and um, I've been kind of like you know um, piecing together certain certain parts and and you know like making some changes to make things. Sorry, I have the hiccups. Um, making things fit together. Um, and, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that here within like the next couple of, maybe the next couple of months, um, or so I'll actually have a, uh, a finished product to actually put in there. Um, you know, something that's completely original to us. And that way we don't, you know, biggest thing is that we have, you know, something that we've created and we don't have to necessarily pay rights to anybody for. So, yeah, which would be cool. And I mean, that's yeah, one that's... thing I do want to do too, actually, where we're, why we're talking is I want to thank everyone that's helped us with the, the, the intros and outros that we've had. Um, I believe the first intro outro was Adam, correct? But he couldn't say subscribe, right? So it drove me nuts. But, um, (laughs) and then we went to, it was Don can't say Twitter. (laughs) I know. It's awesome that we left that in there because that's funny. But, um, and then, uh, then it was Tatiana for a long time was the, the intro outro voice. And now it is, uh, Ashley Woods. So, I mean, we've had a lot of different people kind of help us out with those intros and outros. And part of the reason I went with, you know, Tatiana and Ashley was not to sound bad. There's a lot of testosterone on this, this podcast. So I figured a little bit of uh, a nice soothing female voice might be better, you know, um, a voice that wasn't so deep and scary. So, yeah. So, and I mean, yeah. So Tatiana, (laughs) <laughs> Tatiana and Ashley, um, Ashley right now is the, the one that we have now. Um, you know, so I do want to thank them for their, their help with the intros and outros and then the commercials, uh, the James safety services. That's, that's my, my lovely wife, Amber. Um, she did that one. Um, Don is obviously the one where you can't say Twitter correctly. So, and I don't remember the other commercials we have. Yeah. Brian doing, uh, the beast challenges. That's right. The taco challenge. Brian doing beast challenges. And talk a challenge. Yeah, so, should, so we've had a few yeah. people help us out. I think so, my favorite part of Brian's is uh, is the end where he's like, "You'll be glad you did." Yeah. 
So it's it, we've had a lot of help. We've had a lot of people help us along the way, um, but we're hoping we can get more of those people to help us along the way and do more. I mean, I, I just want this to I want the podcast to grow and be the network that it was supposed to be in the beginning. And uh, you know, just I didn't I didn't have the time or the energy or the the real the manpower to make it what it is. And you know, with the help of Don and Hammer, I, I have been able to finally get it on those on that path towards, you know, the, the podcast network that I wanted it to be in the beginning. So another great boss. So <laughs> anything else you guys have that you want to, you want to talk about? I think we're, I think we're getting close to an hour here. Um, um, we're yeah. actually over an hour. Okay. So is there anything, well, anything else you guys want to bring up? Not that I can think of. You know, for me, I'm just all about the listenership and uh, getting everybody yeah. out there, subscribing, liking, you know, I, I really push the subscribe, like, and repost because that is the only way that we get out there. Um, currently on yep. our on our website, we do have a, uh, a mail subscription also that I think has like maybe a half dozen people on it. Uh, if we can get everybody to get on there, I mean, the Beast OCR group's got 2,000 members. If we have 2,000 people subscribed there, that'd be cool. Um, that way they can yeah. get weekly notifications about the episodes that were posted and whatnot, but uh but yeah, the the big thing is is uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, um, Stitcher, YouTube, all the other Spotify, Stitcher, yep, Spotify, Anchor FM, Anchor FM, yeah. Whichever, so I mean, get on all of them. And and like I said, it, it only takes you a second to hit the subscribe button, and you know, even if that's the only episode you ever listen to, which why wouldn't you listen to more? But hey, some people are that way. Um, but even if yeah. you just do it once, you know, that subscribe, that tells the podcast host that that we're somebody that they should go ahead and promote. Um, when you log yeah. into, into websites, you have, uh, you know, I know that Google and, uh, and Apple do it where they have, like, the podcast suggestions of the week. And, and the ones that are on there are ones that people are subscribed to. And that's that's how they get them out there. Yeah. Or is is Google and Apple are like, ooh, we've got a bunch of subscriptions on this on this podcast this week. Let's go ahead and throw it up next week and see if it takes off. Because honestly, Google and and Apple, you know, they are kind of the big dogs in the room overall. And yeah. and they they sell through our success. So they want us to be successful yeah. so that you'll buy more of their products and it's a big machine. But uh, anything you guys can do to help us, we just want to be heard. I mean, someday break it even yeah. might be cool, but, uh, but you know, just getting heard is the important part. Uh, you know, we get out there and, and we do this as a labor of love. This is definitely not a, a profitable business. No, and it's one of those things, the more we get out there and the more we're heard, the more, you know, the more people know who we are, the more likely we're going to be, I mean, to stick around. I mean, it's a labor of love. We plan on doing this for as long as we can and as long as, you know, the world will let us. But the more we're, we're heard out there, the better we can, you know, the better episodes we can bring you. If we're a known episode, we're a known thing, um, it's more likely that we're going to be able to talk to those, you know, those elite athletes, you know, they're going to be like, oh, I've heard of BeastNet. I will definitely talk to them. Other guys are like, uh, who's BeastNet? You know, and they don't really want to talk to us. So it's if we can get out there and get, you know, get people to know who we are and become more popular, it makes it easier for us to be able to get those those athletes that you want us to get. You know, the the Killians, you know, the Steve Hammond. I will get that guy on this dang episode someday on this show. Um, you know, all of those. So, I mean, it's one of those, you know, we just we need that help to get people to know who we are. So and no, we're not just some fly by night you know, podcast that's trying to get get you to come on our show. We really are, you know, a, a podcast that's been around for a while and has a well-known name. You know, you, you brought up something there that, that you just reminded me of. Um, people finding out who we are. Last year, um, the Obstacle, what is it, the Mud Run Guide, did a best of... 2018, and out of nowhere, this little podcast out of Seattle, Washington, that that yeah. you know we felt wasn't getting out there. We got voted, and we actually got second overall. Yeah, and I believe that was nationally as far as the podcast went. It wasn't the regional one, was it? Because they had the regional. No, yeah, that was that national. Stuff, they didn't have a regional. Yeah, so they didn't have a regional podcast. And, and we honestly, we were the we was a national, and we were second place in the so, in the nation. 
And so not to pump yeah. it up, but you know they're they're going to be posting that again here any day. So it'd be really cool if we could be the for us in 2019. So anybody who's listened this long, if you rambled this long into an episode of Mike Hammer and myself talking about ourselves, and you're still yes. listening, make sure you get over and get on Mud Run Guide and let them know that we are the top podcast that you listen to. We are. So, all right. So, unless there's anything else, I think we should wrap this up because we have been rambling for quite a while. So, um, is there anything else you gentlemen want to say? No. No? Okay. All right. You guys have pretty much covered it for me. Of course, I'm not. All right. I'm always, get racing, you know, I'm always pretty quiet. Course. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Get out, get racing. Um, thank you once again. I mean, I don't know. I can't say it enough. Um, I, I think in a lot of ways, and I mean, people, you know, may understand this and may not, it's more for me. I think in a lot of ways that, you know, you and the two of you saved BeastNet. I was, I was burnt out and I was done. Um, when I brought you guys on, um, I was really close to just stepping back and just kind of letting it do whatever. So I really think you guys really saved saved me from stepping away from something I didn't want to. So, um, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. No. Yeah. Thank you, and thank you for being a part of this with me and going on this crazy journey. So, yeah. So, yeah, well, I guess we'll, we'll, okay. we'll end it there. And thank you, gentlemen. Um, and here's to, here's to many more years to come. So this is going to be amazing. We're here. Does your business need first aid, AED, OSHA, flagging, or other safety training? James Safety Services is your one-stop shop. Find them on Facebook today at James Safety Services WA and ask for a quote on hosting your training needs. Thanks for listening to the BeastNet podcast. If you haven't done it yet, find us on Facebook. Like and share the podcast. Give us a review on iTunes or Spotify. All these things will help to expand the show in the future. This show is brought to you by James Safety Services in partnership with Beast OCR. Don't forget to subscribe and let us know what you think and what you like to hear. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or at BeastOCR.com.